in today's video that I'm going to use the uh, modified 3018 Pro um, CNC which I've modified up to have this 800 watt spindle on. Um, if you want to see the video of, uh, of me building this then uh, I'll put the link uh, in, in, uh, in the links below and you can uh, go and have a quick look on how I built that. Uh, but today what we're going to do is make um, some use of this scrap bit of oak that I have here. So this was um, a kitchen door. <laughs> There's the top part of it, which I'm going to use that for another project. Um, but yeah, this was the centre section of a, of a kitchen door. Um, this is the top section. I've already used the bottom section um, to make this um, clock here. Uh, and again, I made this to its 12 inch diameter clock uh, on the 3018 Pro. So if you want to see a, a video on how I make these, then uh, again, put comments below and I'll uh, create a video showing you how you can make um, a 12 inch diameter clock um, on a 3018 Pro <laughs> machine. Technically, isn't big enough to make, to make that, um, but I can show you how I do that on there. Uh, so for today's video we're going to use this top piece, I'm going to make five um, individual drinks coasters uh, on here uh, and uh, yeah I'll uh, show you the design we're going to use and then we'll get on to making it. So this is the design of the five coasters that we're going to do. Um, we're going to individually engrave a flower motif onto the top of each one as we can see here um, and I've also modelled there the uh, piece of scrap wood just so we can check we've got it to fit in and I've tried to maximise the amount of uh, coasters that we can get from each one and each coaster is 90 millimetres in diameter so it should be just fine for most cup sizes in there. Um, we are quite close to the edges as you can see but again I'm just trying to maximise so what we'll do when we go back onto the CNC um, we'll actually run a little test cut um, but it, a cut is the wrong word, it'll be above the height of the board just so we can check um, that the board's exactly in the right place and then we'll, uh, then we'll actually run the cuts themselves. So we'll use just two tools to do this with. We'll use a 60 degree 6mm wide um, engraving tool to do all the engraving with and then we'll just use a 3mm single flute um, end mill just to uh, cut out and do all of the contours to cut them out actually out and then from there on in we can uh, do the sanding and post processing afterwards. Okay so this this cut's going to be um, very very close to the edges of this piece of wood and this piece of wood is already the, pretty much the size of the table. I've just stuck on a, an extra piece of um, wood there just to act as a, another wasteboard. I could have just cut into mine but uh, as I've already got this piece hanging around I thought I might as well use it, save my uh, current board and that's kind of what it's for but there you go. Um, because it's going to be um, the size pretty much of the entire um, bed we've got nowhere to actually affix um, clamps. I could have put some holes up here um, to align with the um, screw holes there but in this case I've just put some double sided tape on the back of the panel and we'll tape it into position. That way when we cut out the um, the coasters we won't need to leave tabs either uh, that we don't have, them, don't have to worry about cleaning those up later. Um, on the back because the tape will actually hold each one in position anyway as it cuts it out. So we're going to go ahead and get that turned in there. Um, blue tape with super glue um, is or CS glue is another good uh, option here. Uh, I just happen to have some of that around. So I'm going to go ahead now and get that mounted onto here and uh, we'll get ready for, for the first cut. Okay so what I'm doing now is just getting this position to the back edge so that I can make sure that I've got enough on the back of here to get to it because we're going to be cutting nearly 180 uh, the full 180 millimeters of the bed I just want to make sure that I'm as far this way as possible when I'm mounting this on so that I can get it in the best place to make sure I use every millimeter available
Okay, I'm not going to press it down just yet. I think I'm pretty much now in the in the right place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this over and set my zero point uh, over on the left hand side here, uh, which is what I've set for this particular piece. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is run a test uh, cut, effectively not really cutting anything, it's just going to be cutting in uh, mid-air uh, and it will tell me where the edges of each one of the coasters are so I know it's going to fit on and I've got it in the right place before carrying on. Um, one other thing as well is um, I use my phone as the control, as the gerbil controller on here um, to drive and position everything, also to run the, um, the programs. Um, if you want to know how to do that again, um, I've done a video on that, I'll, uh, I'll link it below. So I'm now going to load the, um, the files uh, that I've done. So this is our coaster check file, which is the one that's just going to show us our edges and where they are. And I don't need to run the spindle either for this one, so we can just simply hit play and we can check. Okay, so that's good. Positioning's good. Um, we've got everything where we want it to be, so I'm just going to make sure it's properly pressed down now. And then we can s properly set our zero, uh, ready to do the cut. All we need to do now is bring the um, tip down and we'll set the, the zero point for the engraving process. And we'll just use this um, probe to do that. So we'll just bring this down. Um, a little bit. We'll probe for the zero point for Z. Um, there we go. So we're just going to probe Z. There we go. Perfect. And load in the right program into here. So we're going to load our um, engrave program and now we are actually going to start the spindle and do our engraving. So that's all the engraving finished now, so we're done with this bit and we're going to swap out now to this 3mm um, single flute uh, end mill, spiral flute end mill, uh, just to do the cutting out. So I've driven the spindle back to zero, 0, just while I do the tool change. Z obviously isn't important because we'll reset that once we've got the new tool um, fitted. Uh, but just in case we have any power losses or I accidentally disconnect a cable whilst I'm around the machine, it's better to have it at zero, zero, and then I know exactly where it is. I can pick up again if needs be. <clears throat> okay, so we've now changed over. We've got the uh, three millimeter end flute in there. Um, one of the things to just to remember when you when you are changing tools is to make sure you've got enough Z travel in the um, Z axis to go all the way through. Uh, your workpiece, but also that you've got enough flute length to get all the way through your workpiece as well. Um, quite often you can see some of these tools are quite small on the end. <clears throat> 10, 10, uh, 8 or 10 mil is, is quite common. This particular one's got a 25 millimeter um, flute length, so uh, it's more than enough to get through this. This is about 14 millimeters thick. Uh, on here, um, so this is more than enough, and I've got plenty of Z travel to go all the way down and through. So I'm now going to reset the Z with the Z probe. I'm just going to move it over a little bit just to give me um, some position to get down on, and then we can bring this down a little bit and run the probe. OK, 
Okay, it's all good, we're ready to go. We can check this by sending everything back to zero, including Z. And there we are, perfect. So we're just going to lift that up a little bit. Um, we're going to load in the cutout program. So cut out, that's done. And we are going to start the spindle. Start the program. Easy. So we do we finished doing the cutout now. Um, unfortunately. Uh, we had one hiccup with the last um, coaster cutout in that the, the uh, adhesive tape didn't stick um, as strongly as I'd liked. Maybe the blue painter's tape will be the right way to go with some CS glue next time. But anyway, um, so we're going to have lost one of those, but we've still got four good ones here. Um, out here. So we're going to take this off now, um, off the machine, uh, move this out of the way, and uh, Get these sanded and finished. Okay, let's get these off to sanding. Okay, so we're back from sanding. Um, just need to uh, put on uh, our um, lacquer top coat. We're using a clear lacquer spray uh, for these. Um, should be better resilient to uh, to the heat of uh, hot cups etc going on the top um, <laughs> we'll see I guess is the answer to that one we could have used um, some oil based one like just like Danish oil or something but this is already quite dark oak and I think as soon as you put Danish oil on even clear it will go um, even even quite a bit darker um, than with the clear lacquer so we're going to use the clear lacquer first thing we're going to do then is give them a quick coat on the top and we're also going to start by um, just using the uh, small brush I have there just to work the um, lacquer into all of the bottom of the grooves even though it's a spray you'd think it would get in there um, unfortunately it doesn't especially if you're at a slight angle so we're just going to use the brush just to make sure we've got lacquer in the bottom of all of the um, holes um, and, and grooves and all the engravings covered um, and then we should start to really see them uh, emerge from the from the uh, wood at the moment they're quite difficult to see but I think once we've got the lacquer on um, you'll you'll see them in uh, a bit more clarity Okay, so we'll let that dry now for uh, about 15 minutes and then we can uh, turn them over, do the other side and do the sides, keep repeating. It'll probably take about two coats, three coats maybe, um, to get them uh, to a complete finished product. So there we have it, the uh, coaster's finished, coated up. Um, what we might do as well is just put a little bit of um, um, felt on the bottom or some felt pads maybe just to stop them so they don't scratch anything that they go on but uh, yeah and there they are um, all nicely done coloured up ready to go on the side thanks for watching